Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the introduction, Daniel. Thanks for Biolago for that possibility. So I want to introduce One Limbs and what we did to the last three hackathons. So first of all, I want to give a short wrap up about the last hackathon and what we did within the hackathons, what the goal was and where we are today. Then a short and briefly overview about the One Limbs platform, what we are doing in the industry and what's the goals and our vision and mission. And at least I will show you a live sample of an integration which we made for a project. First of all, the goals of the last three hackathons was to design at the first hackathon, just theoretically, what we needed for uh, connectivity between a limb system, which we are supplying, which is uh, hosted in the cloud, to get the connection to a device in the laboratory. The second goal was, from the limbs perspective, to make the outcome, the preparation and the functionality based on the limb system what is needed for the limb supplier to have a generic integration to the other devices. And the third goal in the third hackathon was to look at the standards of SILA on both sides and integrate, combine, combine these two topics together. We provided some tools for the hackathons. It was for sure an uh, online hackathon, unfortunately. So we have more to speak and more time now in the hackathon and the outcome is much bigger if we see each other. For the hackathons, we defined three questions out there to start. So what, what's the common problems to start at the basics, out at the lab user view, to bring that on, on, on the paper. The second thing was what can be in the workflows and the processes more effective and what kind of workflows can be digitalized and be more efficient. So these are two parameters which are very important in a laboratory, which we are coming later to that, to add more value to the work in the laboratory. And the third question from our side, which we worked on, was what is or how is the definition of a smart user interface? This is also very important. So some answers from the attendees from the, work, uh, from the hackathon, from the first one, was flexibility in the laboratory, also to have more productivity. A uh, very common problem and hurdle is the data management at all, so combining of different formats. Or even more hurdles and problems, heterogeneous data, sample management, of course, and the analog data acquisition. So working with paper and pen in the laboratory still. In the first hackathon, we define a very simple method for co um, con conducting the water content of food, in this case of pommy chips, and defined the easy method. So waiting the pommy chips then specify the time, control the conditions in the vacuum oven and rebalance the dry mass and then at least calculate the water content of this. What is needed for that? For sure the samples, so pommy chips, the materials, the devices and at least a standardized method. Next thing was that we break it down into different steps. So first we need the device of the balance. Then we need a value as Tara. Third step was to weight in the sample itself, to put it in the dry oven, and at least to back weight and calculate the rest, so the water content of this sample. At this hackathon, we used one limbs and we made a mock-up with Ciobra uh, from Mike. He was uh, made up a mock-up of the balance and we put all the workflows on this mock-up. So what was the user, the lab technician, see on the display of the balance and try to follow all the data, the lab technician. 
and all of this data was at least collected in the LIMS system. At the second hackathon, we already start with three questions. How can CLA2 be useful for integration? Then what is needed and what is missing right now in the LIMS system to be a generic connector? And the ongoing question about the smart user interface. What we here did, based on the tech stack from OneLimbs, which we are using in the front end Angular and the back end Node.js, was to combine and integrate, firstly from the side of OneLimbs, from our side, the, to make it Scylla ready. At the next step, at the next hackathon, was it the de definition of the user requirements of the integration for a device lab connectivity. The second point and the work we did was to work on the Node.js repository for Scylla 2 to improve that and to make it final working to get at the third hackathon the handshake between a limb system and a virtual device. What we also did in parallel at the third hackathon was to break it down based on SIPOC, it's a Lean Six Sigma management tool to break, to break processes down in single steps. What we did was to collect different methods in the laboratory, combine them to build a generic user interface that users can easily connect devices with their limb system. And the last task of the third hackathon from our side was a little bit play around to create an own, an own GUI for them to what is important and which kind of elements want a user, a lab technician to see on a display or even to see on a, on a user interface. And this was a very fun exercise at the third hackathon. So next step, I want to give a short introduction about OneLimbs and what we are doing. We're facing problems in the laboratory every day. Most common problems, as I mentioned before, is paperwork. So analog data acquisition is a very famous art of storage. Then sample management, as we heard before, handwritten samples in uh, different kind of medicine labs is very important that you can read everything that they, they write. So I was also in a, in a COVID testing laboratory, which they gathered and worked with their samples and collect data in Excel. And they were online 275,000 and have no traceability. They have no control at all over that. And it was a really mess to see that, how they work with such very important patient data and also results. And at least a various combination of different work lists, spreadsheets, combinations from each of the team members or lab technicians. And if one of them who made up a spreadsheet and did all the calculations get retired, then no one knows how to work with these sheets or, or at least uh, have the control over these spreadsheets. So how we can control higher er error rates in laboratories, how we know when we did a failure in someone, in, in some data. One of the most important things is that we can measure the effectiveness of processes and workflows in laboratories. We use Lean Six Sigma tools for that. One of that is multi moment analysis. And we recognize that a third of the effective time of a laboratory technician is just used for data administration. So collecting data, calculate data, and doing reports with this data, or even trend analysis. And in the industry, a third is a lot of time. And if we are talking about money, this is burned time equals burned money. And if we can bring that number down, that the efficient time to work with data is 
less than a third, so the value is higher in working in a lab, so doing more analysis to produce more money. What is also very important is to work with the data at least, to do risk-based analysis, to do trends, charts, to raise the quality or even to improve the own, uh, the own processes and the own workflows. And this brings me to the last point, is no optimized processes at all. That's why we came up with two topics. One, we provide a service where we go analyzing processes and in the best case, we optimize them. And we're providing the OneLimps platform as an application. What we do at the first time, we make a process landscape of the most important laboratory processes with all the stakeholders, with the input, the output, and the customers. What's the goal of handling this data and what's the goal of the lab itself? If it's possible, we optimize them, we streamline the processes at its best to save time and at least costs. At the third step, we lay down the modular OneLimps platform over the processes and use the most valuable processes to get automated and, as I call it, the donkey work, the everyday daily routine work, also automated within these processes. And the least what we will deliver is care and support packages for the clients with best practice workshops and also power user workshops. So to have a better understanding of the processes in the laboratory is mostly very individual. So it's like a recipe in mind is I'm doing step one, step two, step, step three, step four. It makes all sense if I'm playing the steps in my head. But if we're going to put for every step a post-it on a wall and write down what we are doing within this step, it looks like more like a network. It's not a flow in one direction. A process is a combination of steps with different kind of decisions, different kind of time. And what we are doing is we challenge these process networks to it's a little bit idyllic, but to streamline the process at least, to get it lean, to use less time and less effort to get to the goal. What our goal is in the lab is a lab-centric LIMS system, laboratory information and management system, which is cloud-based. What here is important to have a connectivity to the device. Even a lab technician don't want to run always to the device to have a look what's the status, which kind of run it is, and this should be remotely controlled and re remotely checked. More than in a LIMS system, you work with products, articles, samples, different kind of numbers and data, which are coming mostly from ERP systems or even from production side. That's why it's very important to have these kind of connections. Also, not all laboratories or quality control laboratories in the industry do all their analyses by themselves. So it's also important to have an external analysis or external connectivity to a service lab, which you can send some orders with predefined QR codes and labels. The service lab gets these samples, can scan them, analyze them and send just the reports or the analyze values back into the LIMS system of the company. Also, what's even more important is to have um, client or supplier qualification. So if you are a service lab, you want to provide your, your reports, like we know it from the, the COVID certificates, to get a QR code and download from your products, articles, or even your own blood tests, your uh, test report easily over a web portal. And to have an architecture which enables that we can import or integrate and connect different kind of fabrics like kind of different companies around the world. If we want to see place a quality control or laboratory on a diagram between efficiency and effectiveness, 
most of the companies are at the green dot and want to install or implement an application, like an app on a smartphone, and wishes and hopes that this will erase all their problems and will be this only one solution. But if we have long error missing, very complex workflows, and we just digitalize them, in English there is this, the, the wording digitization, it's just complex error workflows just in a digital way, but it's not really effective. That's why we are going to look at the processes first to make this optimization, to bring it down, and then at the second step, we digitalize all these optimized workflows to bring added value in two dimensions. That's the idea from this point. At the next slide, I want to present some couple of projects we are working on. One is a combination, a collaboration between Eurofins and OneLIMS and SQTS and ourselves to integrate our LIMS system directly into the service lab. So you don't have to need to use the service lab web portal. You just can add your samples and your order and combine them before and send the order and get the results back most quickly than you use the web portal. Another thing is what we are doing with validation of the reports and what's happened to the audit trail. Most of the audit trail are saved in a no normal database. We are thinking that the future could be that we can store the audit trail of the LIMP system in a blockchain or even make the validation of the reports in a blockchain for the through validation. I want to give you an example of a user interface, how a mapping could look like. So you can choose what kind of mapping settings you want to do, with, with which kind of component. Then if you want to connect with a device or is it an external service or even an ERP system, you have to define by this. And here you will then reselect what kind of type of device it is. And I can choose here the test unit. Test units is called a parameter. Everyone knows what a pH determination is. So I can give within this internal database in OneLIMS, this is all the parameters we use in OneLIMS, like a library, and we can create test plans out of that. And we have here a pH determination within the library of OneLIMS, and I want, mapped, I want to map this with an external device. And this device will be provided by a metrum device, a pH meter, and I can give them this mapping and can connect now with the device itself and can choose from this device which method, openly shared method, I want to use to map with the one limbs internal pH determination. Now I can choose that one, I can apply it to one limbs and I can save it and map internal in one limbs the parameter with an external device. What this will not show right now is how the device is connected by itself. So the idea is for the user itself that he can configure the language of the device and can make it easy, clickable, to make the setup between the connection of the device and one limbs as easy as to connect a network printer with Windows. That's the goal, what we will to do, to get a generic adapter, which is very user-friendly and user-centric, to connect devices in the laboratory. That's all. want to say thank you for your time and attention, and I'm open up for questions later.